Hello and welcome to the Mal and Johnny Show. Well, they do say we've suffered for our art. And Johnny, I, I'm proving it today. Look at these glasses. Can you see all the rain on those glasses? Well, you've been out in the rain, have you? Yeah, well, it's it's like it's like the end of the world out there. It's like the end of the world. And I, <laughs> it's only I, just started here. <laughs> oh. And I left my best uh, set of headphones down. That, well, I'm not going back down, Johnny. Not in this weather. Not in this weather. So I've got my big studio headphones on rather than my little petite ones that I use for our podcast normally. So I'm just going to... I just wanted people to know you know, what we have to go through, Johnny, because it's, you know, it's not all glamour, is it? It's not all glamour. No, and you had to climb up through the... Uh, <laughs> the Somme? To get ba- battle of the Somme. They call me garden. Right, nearly through there. Through the mud. Oh, I tell you what, Johnny, it's... There we are, right. Okay, hello and welcome to the Mal and Johnny Show. Um, so I haven't got that out of the way. Um, some sad news this week. Johnny, you, you, you've lost a, a dear old friend and colleague. Oh, yeah, Vince Hill. I mean, he was a lovely guy, Vince. I did... A panto with him in 1972. Wow. And what's a sobering thought? It was Vince Hill, Barbara Windsor, and Bill, and, um, Bill Maynard. And all three are gone. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. You know, I'm it? still standing, but that's about it. <laughs> well, you're, you're not just standing. You're tap dancing as well, Johnny. I so tap you, you, dancing. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But apparently, Vince, I was speaking to his MD. Uh, Ernie Dunstall rang me uh, the day before when he died. Because Ernie used to be Dorothy Squire's MD. Ah. And then she went, he went with Vince, and he was with Vince for about ooh, 10 years, 15 years. And then he went with uh, Joe Longthorn afterwards, and now he's retired. Um, Ernie Dunstall, a wonderful musician. He was the, the MD for the Eurovision Song Contest for a couple of years. What? Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's top notch, isn't it? You know, because you've got to control but, everything. Yeah, like but it. poor old Vince. I mean, he, we had some laughs with Vince. He used to stand behind me when I was singing, you know. He'd be, he'd be behind the, uh, the curtain, and he'd be winding me up, you know, saying things <laughs> But I, I remember him saying he met Princess Margaret once because it was the, I think it was the command performance, and she he was she was going along the line, mm-hmm. and he sung the soliloquy from um, uh, Carousel. Right. You know, my boy Bill. Da, da, da. I said, "What did he say? What did she say, Vince?" She said, "What a long song." <laughs> <laughs> That's just what you want to hear, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, what a long song. <laughs> Could have done a show. He had, he had a great voice. Yeah. He was he was like the British Jack Jones, if you like. He had that lovely voice and a great control mm. and a good range. He was just a proper, what I call a proper singer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he was a good singer. And a big star, wasn't he? Because I remember the, the Ferrari if I can use that word, uh, when he came yeah. to the Convalian Social Club. He was front page of the South Wales Evening Post that such a big star was coming to Swansea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the thing is, Vince, Vince started as a band singer. Okay. okay. And his wife, Annie, used to be um, an agent's a secretary. I think, what was the name of the agent? Uh, I, I, it'll come to me. Anyway, she, he used to have a lot of big stars. So she said, my boyfriend's a singer. And he took him on. And he was to sit with Bob Miller and the Miller Men. Do you remember those? Oh, no, no. Well, they used to be fantastic. Parade of the Pops was the name of the programme. Right. Uh, <clears> on <throat> radio. Well, in those days, it was like programme, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And uh, he used to sing all the, the pops of the day, like do the cover of the songs of the day. And um, he, he joined a group called the Raindrops. Right. They, were, they were quite famous. They were a four, four-part harmony group. And then he went solo. And then he had a bit of, bit of success. And then he sang a song for Eurovision back in the early 60s. And it was a climb up, little darling, into the Sharapang. What a day at the seaside. One of those kind of songs, you right. know. And I, I used to sing it in the summer season. I didn't know it was his until this week. I saw it on there. But then he had a big hit with Idle, Edelweiss. Mm. I think he went to number one. Yeah, and then that's and, and when got, that's when the number one really was across everything, oh, wasn't it? Everybody would know what the number one was. It wasn't like well, there's so many right. charts these days that you never quite sure what's what, do you? But well, this was the one and only <clears throat> the top of the pops, and he mm. he um, he did that. Then the when he worked with me, or I worked with him, which you already look at it. He was he just done a thing called um, uh, I know there's someone or someone who needs me. Uh, I don't know the title of it, but that got to number two as well. Right. So he had a lot of hits. Yeah, yeah. He's a big star, Vince. And then it, the, the whole thing opened up, obviously, TV, so there a lot of TV shows, and then theatre and, and the big clubs as well, I suppose. Oh, yeah, I did all the clubs. Well, we all did the clubs in the 70s. They were mm. huge. I mean, Cumbelling was one of them. and that, that was a workman's club, but it was still big. It was yeah. a, like a, I don't know how many people it held. It was a b- big audience. Yeah. But you had all those great nightclubs as well, didn't you? You had like the... 
uh, uh, in this area, for instance, the Double Diamond Club held 1,200 people, I think, mm. and uh, Tito's in Cardiff, and then you had the, the Stoney and Pothcop, and then you've got a Manchester, Mr. Smith's, Blighty's, Talk of the North Echo. I mean, they were everywhere. Yeah. And, yeah. and the big American stars mm. used to come over. They did say, at one point, Britain had more live work than Las Vegas. Wow. So wow. There was a, a, a Wakefield Theatre Club, Batley Variety Club. I mean, you know, they'd have people like um, Gene Vincent and yeah. uh, who else would be Neil over Sadaka there? Neil Sedaka came across to Nancy and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the American singers used to come over. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, and and I, I don't suppose there's, well, people like Michael Bublé, but there's, there's not a lot of people like Vince Hill anymore. No, he was a, he was a crooner, crooner. But, uh, as they used to call him. <laughs> but he was, in the, he was in the vein of your Bublé's or Sonat, no, not Sonat, so more, more Tony Bennett, really, Perry, because he had a higher voice. Perry Como, that sort of area, am I Perry right? Perry Como, yeah, all those those mm. proper torch singers, mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, was, he had a good voice, it was just a lovely, how can I explain his voice? Victor Moan was another one, I met Victor Moan um, on, a, on a cruise once, and Victor Moan, Sonat just said, if God could sing, he'd sound like Victor Moan. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, the last time I worked with Vince was on a ship wow. from New York back to Southampton. We did a we did a gig, yeah. and um, funny enough, because I've known Ernie Dunstall as MD even before he did, because he was with Dorothy. Ernie gave me a couple of arrangements of things, you know, that I used to do. Right. And some of them were Vince's because he'd written them for Vince. <laughs> so Vince turns up and says, oh, I can't do the Manal medley. That's Vince's. No, I can't do it. <laughs> I didn't tell Vince, but I did something else instead. <laughs> and then, no, he's a great guy. And he had a wonderful house. It was at Kingston on Thames, was it? Yeah. No, Henley on Thames. And uh, it was um, built for the Vanderbilts. Beautiful oh house. Gosh. And his wife, Annie, was a very, very shrewd woman, you know. Yeah. She went to the bank and she borrowed money to buy a Lowry painting. And, of course, it doubled in price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she was a shrewd woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. But uh, she was a nice woman as well. I liked Annie. She was good. And Panto, just but, a quick uh, quick memory of Panto. What was it like you, Barbara Windsor? We made me of Panto. Well, he played Buttons. Mm. Uh, Barbara Windsor was playing one of the sisters because it was Cinderella, mm. but she wanted to play it glamorous, not ugly. Mm-hmm. So she was Evelina, they called her or something. Mm-hmm. And I was Dandini. Of course you were. <laughs> <laughs> what well, oh Dandini? Had a good day's hunting. <laughs> and we used to, and, it, and the guy who played the prince, he was, <laughs> how can I say this without being derogatory? He was a bit of a poser, you know. Oh. He'd ring me up and says, Johnny, the prince charming here, can you give me a lift? Not he would say his name, <laughs> Prince Charming, and he used to sing. It is what did he used to do? Because uh, Vince and I used to laugh. Um, one of the Carpenter songs, and the day that I was born, the angel got together. Yeah, they decided to. And he used to, to miss, four, miss four bars out, and the band would be going berserk because it's like big band. You, you go, a sprinkle starts in your hair and your eyes are blue. He said, so there's a whole bit missing. <laughs> And Vince uh, would sing his top number. And then once, Vince, I had to do the, the song sheet with Vince because he used to do it with Barbara at the end. You know, they do the two big stars, that get the kids going at the end, yes, you know. Yes. Well, I forget the song now. But Barbara had just done uh, the sketch where she has the spider coming down out of the, the wing. You know, it's a bit like the ghost gag. Right. The spider comes on the kids. She's a big spider. And it's made of solid wood. Okay. And it came off the hook one night and smacked her on the head. And, but it knocked her out. Oh, my God. <laughs> but we didn't know she was knocked out. She was laying in the bed. <laughs> and Bill Maynard goes on and he's going, get up, you've had your cocoa, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but of course she couldn't do the song sheet then. Yeah. So Vince said, you're going to have to do it with me, John. Yeah. So I said, OK. So it's me and Vince doing the song. But I just had a I used to see him all the time. If he came mm. to Wales, he'd come and see me. Yeah. If I was up that way, I'd go and see him, you know. Yeah, brilliant. He had a sad life, actually. Yeah. First of all, Annie couldn't have any children for a long time. And eventually, uh, she got pregnant with with Athol, the son. Uh, but she had all these fibroids oh. in, in as well at the same time. And she had a, a very, very hard time. Um, and eventually, she, she, she gave birth to Athol and he was okay. But um, he committed suicide. Oh, boy. It's... When he was older. And um, then Annie died. So Vince was all on his own, his big house, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But he used to keep in touch with Ernie and talk to Ernie all the time. I'm going to I'm going to see Ernie on Friday. I'm going down to see him. He lives in Surrey. Brilliant. I'm going to go and see him. Oh, good man. And then, of course, we lost um, Tony Bennett, another great, great singer. Bennett. 
Never met Tony Bennett, but he was a great singer. Yeah, yeah. Great singer. I saw him do I mean, some TV show with Lady Gaga, and she was very oh, good, to be honest. that was wonderful. Yeah. That was wonderful, because... How can I? Because he didn't do the ballads anymore, but he could swing like oh. nobody, you know, because he clipped the words, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, and she was great. I mean, because I've never heard her doing jazz. Yeah. She's, she can sing anything, that girl. Yeah, yeah. I thought exactly. Yeah, the same I, I've thing. got it on tape, that, that show. I keep watching it. Yeah. It's wonderful. It is brilliant. Um, so, people we've lost, but a, a person I caught up with, I went to do the Talking Pictures uh, event in Monmouth at the Savoy Theatre. Uh, have you been yeah. to the Savoy? You must have been to the Savoy. It's a beautiful theatre. Yeah, Old I theater. went there to plug my book. The, the, the publisher set a, um, a, a day up when I went there. They mm. talked about the book and I beautiful. signed books and so yeah, on and so forth. So they well, I know the guy know. that runs it. He used, to be the, he used to be the head of equity. That's right. Uh, Chris. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, uh, so they had a great weekend. Lots of people. Mike Reed was working his socks off, and he's he talked about the heritage chart. So I did a couple of songs, but uh, on before me was Maureen Evans, and she said, "Oh, Maureen. I know that Johnny Tudor." And I said, "Well, so do I." I said, "So do I." <laughs> anyway, anyway, Maureen's lovely. I I first met Maureen when I when I was mm. sixteen. I went to work in a men's shop called John Collier's in Queen Street in Cardiff. And her brother, who was about two years older than me, he was this he was the salesman at the time. So I was the junior salesman. Right. And his name was uh, Raymond, lovely bloke. And that's how I got to know her. But at the time she was quite a big star. She got a couple of number ones, I think. Yeah, and, and she, like I do was the big one. Like I do. Dee, 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 da, 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 da. I think it was based on a on the classic, wasn't it? <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. Before before it was made a comic song. Do you yes. remember that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and the thing is about it, because she did I suppose she did. You took all the songs from wherever they were on her album. She she did um, a lot of like Brenda Lee songs. That that's right. Yeah, yeah. And and of course she did say at one stage um, Elvis was going down the chart as she was going up, and she was yeah. higher than Elvis one week in the chart in the in the early sixties. Yeah, she was from Broadway in Cardiff, not yeah. Broadway. In <laughs> and she told me she split her time between Cardiff and Nantaglo. Nanta Glow. Nanta Glow. Yeah. Why Nanta Glow? I, do, I think it's family and friends. Uh, but during oh, all right. during all the time, being a big pop star, you know, and, and you know, because the thing is, if you were top three, top five in those days, everybody knew you, didn't they? As it keep on That's saying, right. it was a very yeah. sort of, you know, there were so few media outlets. If you were top of the charts, they knew you. Uh, and yeah. she never left Cardiff, she said. Never left Cardiff. Always wanted to stay in Wales. Cardiff or Nanta yeah. Glow. So she never moved to London. She retired too early, in my opinion. She mm. she gave up. She married somebody. I, mm. I forget who her husband was. Yeah. I think I don't. She's been married twice. She may have been, okay. but she gave up um, to be a housewife, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But you know, she was at the top of a tree when she gave up. I don't know why she did it. Because she, she, she still looks great. Oh, she's she was amazing, and you know, sharp as a sharp as a button. Lots of great stories. I think she started yeah. a theatre school. Had a theatre school for some time, but um, that's oh. why she did that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. she wanted to send her love to you, Johnny Tudor. Oh, as, that's as nice. most I'll the, give her a ring. I most of the women I've ever met say exactly the same thing, Johnny. Most well, give Johnny, <laughs> give Johnny my love. There's a little sparkle in their All eyes. All the girls I've loved before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe we should get Maureen on as a guest. Yes, let's get her on. Did you, did you talk to her about it? Oh, well, I mentioned it in passing. I didn't want to... You know, I'll ring her up then, because I got a number, because she rings me quite often. Fabulous. I'll give her a bell, and uh, we'll, we'll set it up. We'll have a good old chat to her. Fantastic. Okay, well, let's yeah, get... Because she's a bit older than me, but she looks marvellous. Oh, she was wonderful, and she was so lovely. Uh, and she was yeah. so graceful and the, I tell you what the audience it was a it was a packed house and they were just yeah. so delighted to to hear her stories you know so yeah you know these, how, how many people were there I mean you know doing stuff you oh, and Maureen it was it was it was a constant flow really some people from the, the program the champions Caroline Monroe was there there's a guy who I'd never met before who does um it does a show all about John Le Mesure. Now, did you, know, right. how, did you know how to say it? Le Measurer? John Le Measurer, yeah. yeah it's, I, I it, rhymes with treas it rhymes with treasurer. It just for you to, if you ever need to do it in the, in the uh, at all. Le Measurer. Le Measurer. Yeah. It's, 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 um, the name comes from Jersey. Oh. But I, I spoke to him once. Did I ever tell you the story? Oh, no, come on. <laughs> the phone went in Dorothy's house, and I'm staying there at the time, and it was him. Now, you can't mistake that voice, no. the Le Measurer voice. It was like, you know, very yes. droll of it. And his wife had left him right. and run off with Tony Hancock. Oh. <laughs> right. And Tony Hancock had gone to stay at Dorothy's house to dry out because he'd, he'd been on the booze. So he rings up and says, is Dorothy there? I said, oh, my God, I'll call her now. Dorothy, I think it's Le Measury on the phone. So I can hear her on the phone. She's going, 
yeah, it must, it must be terrible. Yeah, she's gone off with that. Well, what am I supposed to do about it, John? She said, put another song in your act. <laughs> that was her answer to everything. Don't worry, but put another song in your act. And that's what we'll get, we'll always do, Johnny. When things go badly wrong, we'll always put another right. song in the end. All right. Well, look, it's still raining, yeah. It's raining I'm, here, no. I'm stuck in awful. I'm stuck in the shed. And I got the kids thing. for six weeks now. Oh, I got the grandkids to look after for six Johnny, weeks. I'm doing like this. Oh, Johnny. Oh, I'll take up the swimming pool. Good. <laughs> Make sure they get the pictures. Get too wet. <laughs> we don't want to get wet <laughs> wet outside playing in the rain. We'll take the take up the swimming pool. All right, man. Well, lovely yeah. to speak to you. So. Uh, sad news about losing Vince, but lovely to catch up with Maureen Evans. Hopefully she'll be a guest on a future episode of The Man. Yeah, I'll show. give it a call. Uh, so it's yeah. goodbye from him. And it's goodbye from him. <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye. Ta-da.